Yom Tov! It's Friday, the 19th of July, 2019. This is Stephen Brook bringing you Messianic Moment Ministries. Thank you for being here. This being Friday, of course, we're doing our Parsha reading, and at the end of the previous Parsha, we read how Pincus killed the Israelite man and the Midianite woman who were making a spectacle of Moses. Now, starting in this reading, God makes a covenant with Pincus that his descendants shall all be high priests because of the zealousness that Pincus showed which stayed God from destroying the sinful Israelites. Next in line, God orders a new census to be made, and the results show very little difference, really, in the overall number of the 12 tribes since the last census, which was 40 years earlier, coming out of Egypt. Although some tribes were significantly less, specifically Reuben, Simeon, Gad, Ephraim, and Naphtali. Now note, that when encamped and during the march, Gad, Simeon, and Reuben were always next to each other. And when I, when I reviewed that, I saw that they were so close to each other all the time. It let me remember about how Yeshua said, just a little bit of comets in the dough spreads throughout it. So obviously, these guys were always next to each other, talking to each other. And the idea is that the tribes that had less numbers were the tribes that had committed more sins. The new census confirms also that all those who rebelled against God by refusing to enter the land when they first came to it were now dead. There's also one member of the tribe of Manasseh called Zelophehad who had never had a son, but he did have five daughters. And he died in the desert because he was one of the rebelling, rebelling ones, but the daughters asked Moses for a ruling regarding the inheritance that they're supposed to receive. God tells Moses that when a man has no sons, his daughters will be allowed to inherit the land, but they must marry within their tribe so that the land that is promised to that tribe doesn't revert to another tribe. Then God has Moses climb a mountain to observe all the land and tells him that soon he will be gathered to his people. Moses' first response is not a plea for himself, but for the people to make sure that God leaves a leader behind for them. It's remarkable. Even when he's told he's going to die, his first thought, is of protecting and caring for God's people. God tells Moses to give some of his authority to Joshua by laying his hands on him in front of the entire assembly and also before Eliezer, the Kohen Haggadol. And the Parsha ends with God reviewing the rulings regarding the daily and festival sacrifices. Now, when Moses laid hands on Joshua, symbolizing Moses giving his authority to Joshua, the Hebrew word used in that verse, which is Numbers 27:18, is the Samchat, which means basically to lay your hands on. The Hebrew word actually derived from that is a noun called Samicha, which in the Talmudic age meant to be given the rights and duties of a rabbi. It is, in a way, a form of ordination. We hear this word used in the Gospels. Not the Hebrew word, of course, because nearly every New Covenant Bible is based on Christian interpretation. But that word is what they would have used when the Pharisees asked Yeshua who had given him authority to teach. Now, one place this occurs is Luke 22. And here's what it says. And speak unto him, saying, Tell us, by what authority dost thou do these things? Or, who is he that gave thee this authority? And in Mark 11, 27 to 28, after they returned to Jerusalem, Yeshua was walking in the temple courts, and the chief priests, scribes, and elders came up to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked, and who gave you the authority to do them? The word that the Pharisees, scribes, etc., all these people would have used would have been samicha, which is what they were given when they were appointed to their position of authority. They were basically asking, hey, who died and left you in charge? And Yeshua's answer was the typical Jewish response, which is to answer a question with a question. You know, he never really admitted to his authority, his samicha, coming from God, which should bring up the question, why didn't he? Well, I'm not sure, <laughs> but my guess is that at that time we read, it just wasn't time for his true mission on earth to be revealed. I mean, he told his mother, 
When she asked him in John 2 to help with the wedding that ran out of wine, he said it wasn't yet his time. And he also told his Talmudim, disciples, not to tell people that he is the Messiah when that revelation was made by Kepha in Matthew 6.13. Kepha, the Hebrew for Peter. And just the same way that when he healed people, many times he told them not to tell anyone that he did it. So, do we, as born-again believers, have the authority to interpret the Bible, to preach, to advise, or to explain to others about the kingdom of God? Do we have a samika? I would say, yes, we do, because we have the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, indwelling in us, and as such, we get a direct message from God. Oh, well, we should. <laughs> we should. Not everyone who professes to be saved acts the way they should, and, you know, myself included there. Yet, still at all, we are human, and we will never be as righteous as Yeshua was, so what we can do, though, is take the samicha we have through the Ruach and use it as best we can, recognizing, recognizing and remembering always the tremendous responsibility we have to teach accurately and correctly. And therein lies the biggest problem of all. How do we know we are teaching correct interpretation and leading people towards God and not away from God? I mean, even with the best intentions, we can deprive people of their salvation by leading them not to heaven, but to Sheol with improper interpretation and wrongful teachings. As the old saying goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So my answer to that question is, I don't have an answer. I can only say the best way to be secure in your own knowledge is to read the Bible Listen to people who demonstrate through their actions they are God-fearing. Hey, words mean nothing. Okay, People don't mean what they say. They mean what they do. And ultimately, ask God to show you what He wants you to learn from His Word. And remember, the same passage can have different meanings to different people. And each person could be correct in their own interpretation. What I would also recommend as I finish today's message is that when you hear someone tell you what something from the Bible means, whether it sits well with your spirit or doesn't sit well with your spirit, go to the Bible and verify for yourself what is written and ask God to show you what He wants you to know from it. I choose to listen, to read the Bible every day, to pray for understanding, to listen to others, to verify what I hear in God's Word and decide ultimately for myself rather than just accept what I hear from someone simply because they have a samicha. My ministry is all about making sure you know what you are doing and saying because we will all be held accountable for our actions. And for my money, I want to make sure that whether I am right or wrong, it isn't because I was just too lazy to check it out when I had the chance. Amen. So, thank you for being here again, always. I appreciate your, your, your being here. And please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Click the little icons in the corners. Go to, back to the website. Click on the subscribe button. And do both, please, because this is a YouTube channel, and that's a website, and it's not the same list. And all I do is send you a notification when I, um, what, <laughs> brain fart, send you a notification when I do a post. It must be Shabbat. I need the rest. Anyway, one last thing. I've been running a GoFundMe campaign. Here's the link. And this is to raise money to buy Bibles and Bible study materials for three different Ugandan Messianic synagogues. They're in rural Uganda in the Messianic. Can you imagine? They've asked me for help because one of the men who's one of the leaders um, actually subscribes to this ministry. And if you haven't heard about this yet, or this is the first time you're hearing about it, I've been doing it for about a month and a half, but I have to close it out in the next week or so. So please, please donate something, a dollar, five, twenty thousand. Anything you send will help us. It costs over a hundred dollars just to send the stuff to them. So please do something again. There's the link. Please subs donate something. Um, I appreciate it, but you'll be blessing them. And you know, God gives us all blessings, and when we share them with others, God gives us even more blessings. So, be selfish. Give something to this so you get something out of it. Um, <laughs> hallelujah. 
And again, I always welcome comments. All I ask is that you be nice. So, it's Friday. I wish you all Shabbat Shalom. And until next time, we eat throat and Baruch Hashem.